Let's start with Angelina Jolie in Haiti. She told us that she has a passion for that country, and so I asked her how she could use her star power to mobilize real powers on behalf of Haiti. Welcome to the program from Port-au-Prince, Angelina. Thank you very much. So you've been there for a couple of days. What have you noticed that's really struck you as, a, as an emergency, as what needs to be taken care of right now? Well, I think the thing that, that maybe, uh, because we follow the news, we follow a lot of the dramatic stories, but I think when you really get here, it is as dramatic, if not more dramatic, than you'd imagine on the scale and the complexity, certainly. It is absolutely the most complex uh, post-disaster situation I think anybody, government or UN, has ever faced. But what is being done is extraordinary, and, and uh, the Haitian people are, are so dignified, they're calm, they're helping themselves. Um, they inspire me. I've seen many children with amputations who are, are smiling and strong and talking about their future. You realize that these people have suffered so much for so long that in fact they are so resilient. Um, and it, it's almost sad how used to struggling they are. Right. Tell me what's motivating your visit at this time. What do you want to achieve at this time? Well, there are a few different uh, things. One, I wanted to understand, I worked with UNHCR for a while and they handle refugees, but they also handle internally displaced people, about 10 million internally displaced. So I was very curious as to how they're going to help to organize all of the people. And, you know, as you know, this, this situation, the more I looked into it, and I know lots of people watching the news, we realized that even before the earthquake, three-fourths of the population had no education. This country had no primary school education. There was no civil registry, meaning no birth certificates, no land certificates, no death certificates, so how exactly is everybody going to start to organize these people and even register them is, is, is a new challenge that everybody's facing. I mean, as you mentioned, two big issues, the issue of children and protection and the issue of the internally displaced and the need for shelter. Um, look, you know there, because you've seen it now with your own eyes, that there are tens, if not hundreds of thousands of people living out on the streets in these, in these tent cities that we saw when we were there. They need major shelter. They need major tents. UNHCR is really good at that. Is there a way that you can help with your presence, uh, motivate the, the arrival of tents, for instance? Absolutely. I've, I've been speaking with UNHCR. I've been speaking with all the UN agencies, and everybody is trying to, to race to kind of get this done in time. Um, but I've also spoken with people who are talking about shelters that have to be properly, they have to get a proper certification to withstand certain weather. Can I ask you about the children? Now, the UN, UNHCR has provided us with some of the video of your visit, including to SOS, uh, a child protection organization. Let me ask you, because children are very much in the news. And before I went there, the head of UNICEF alerted us on this program to beware of trafficking, to be aware of hasty adoptions. The Prime Minister told me a couple of weeks ago and, and really made a dramatic statement that already children were being trafficked and even organs were being trafficked. And now, of course, you've arrived in the middle of this, uh, um, let's say, legal case where a bunch of Americans are being held because of, because of charges of, of trafficking. What do you think needs to happen for these children to protect them, even from people who might think they're doing their best for them by trying to take them out? Well, I think we have, to, we have to enforce the law and work with the government. I know there's a new child protection cluster that's formed that's doing everything they can to co coordinate. Um, they're talking a lot about reunification. Talk to ICRC about this reunification program because that's the most important thing, to try to track everybody. But as we said, very difficult without birth registration. Um, it is a huge problem. Trafficking has been a huge problem in this country for a very long time and a very, very real problem. So I think everybody that means well needs to really take that very seriously and not get frustrated but really work with the country and for myself as somebody who's an adoptive parent I understand the the urge to, to assist in that way but now is not the time an emergency is not the time for new new adoptions in any way I'm personally going to assist in country organizations like SOS that that in fact do raise orphans in country with widows it's an extraordinary program and they do it and they raise them for life and, and it's, uh, it's one of the programs that's in 134 countries and it should be scaled up. It's one of the, 
the, uh, the best ways to help a child without removing a child from its home country. So, so the more we can scale up in country, the better. Look, you, you raised the, pro the prospect of yourself as an adoptive parent. Obviously, there's been a lot of speculation as to whether you will adopt from Haiti. Obviously, you're saying not now, but will you? Is that something that you're looking right. at? I, I'm, I'm always open to, to, to children around the world where that kind of a family, Brent and I talk about that, but, but that's not what we're focusing on at this time by any means. We're not here for that. We're here to, um, to see how we can help protect the children in country and, and scale up the needs here. So when you went to SOS, you saw some of the children, correct, who had been, um, well, who, who had been taken out, or at least they tried, the, 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 the Baptist missionaries were trying to take them out. You saw some of those children at the SOS facility? I did. And how I were did. they doing? And, and they seem... Well, it's, it's, it's a beautiful facility. It's, it didn't cr crumble to the ground. It's actually a wonderful, happy place for children. They seem very, very cared for. Um, I don't know how much you can talk about the discussions with those children because it's an ongoing case. But I, I will say they did mention, the two that I spoke to did mention their parents um, and their desire to see their parents. Obviously, you can't get into the legal ramifications of what's going on right now. but. What is your opinion on this group who came and just wanted to take these kids out to the Dominican Republic and then maybe to the United States? Uh, you know, I think there's been a lot of discussion about them and I think um, they're being used as an example case. I don't know enough of the facts and I don't know. I, I think we all like to believe that people have very good intentions and I don't, um, I'm certainly not the one to say anything negative. But there are real traffickers that we do know of. And we do have to all take that into serious consideration for these children. And so what is the big picture? How can we help the... Before the earthquake, there were some 380,000 orphans living in horrible conditions. There are many more now, but we don't know who is an orphan. I've met women in the Dominican Republic in hospitals who were saying they haven't spoken to their children. They have no cell phones. They have no way to tell their children they're alive. They can't find them yet. And so, so there is, that's the most important thing that we can do is just protect everybody, give them aid, start to register them, and try to help them with reunification. And then we can discuss ways to help them beyond that. And, and we all need to be here, which is the other discussion. We all have to help these children and this country for a very long time. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you well, know. On so. that note, I really do want to explore that long-term help beyond the sort of emergency, beyond the Band-Aid phase. We're going to go for a break right now, but stand by. We'll be back in just a moment after a break.